Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosell. Today I thought I would do a quick video in Synology's DSM showing how you guys can back up data in your containers. So uh, Synology has a nice little tool called Container Manager and I am on a attempt in the start of 2024, my resolution to get my life organized. So after organizing my optical media collection, I'm now trying to inventorize everything in my home office, which is just a mess of boxes and whatnot. So I've been trying out a few programs. I unfortunately could not get Snipe it to install, but uh, for another day to keep trying at that challenge. However, I did get my home box uh, running. Now, when it comes to uh, sort of containers and whatnot, everything actually, as a sort of backup, uh, backup nerd or backup enthusiast, the first thing I do when I'm evaluating a software, well, not the first, after looking at it is say, is there a decent backup functionality? Because if there isn't, and even if there is, if the backup is in a proprietary format, you're kind of stuck to that product indefinitely. And that's always something I look to avoid. So that's just my tip for those who are also uh, sort of into the world of backups and trying to uh, you know, protect your data. So I looked at the import export functionality in this in this little product called Homebox. It's not wonderful. It does an export of your items as a CSV, but that's it. It won't export the locations, which to me is a bit of a weakness. Now maybe they're in the items, but you can't export just the locations as a top level. So I was kind of shaky about that, but then I thought, hey, why don't I just back up the container? And this is the advantage of using containerization. So in uh, Container Manager, you can do that in one of two ways. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to make a suggestion and that is go ahead firstly and create a folder in file station for your container backups. And I'll just show you guys the way I've got mine laid out. So I created a folder called, uh, shared volume I should say, called container backups. And I created a folder for Homebox, ready to back up the container. And I just did a folder with like today's date, a uh, day and month. And I'll explain why I did all this in a second. So if I go in this, I also, as this is my first time backing up a container, I decided to take both a full backup and a settings only backup to see how big they'd be. Settings only backup was super, super lightweight. It's just a little JSON file. Uh, so that is my suggestion for setting it up. Now let's put that away for a second and go back to this. So to back up the container, select the container and you don't have to, it will let you do this backup if the container is running. Um, you might want to stop the container before doing this, but I didn't see it mentioned as a requirement in the Synology documentation. So go into export then at the bottom of this menu and you have two options here. You can export just the container settings, which is kind of going to be a lightweight backup. And if you click on this here, it says the container settings, for example, port settings, environmental variables will be exported. The exported file will be approximately one KB in size. So you might think from this export container settings, it's going to be the settings of the application in the container. No, very important. This is a very, very small backup which just has the just has the settings of the container in Synology right so uh, that's actually going to not really get your data out at all and that's the default option so you have to be very careful here so the second one export container contents and settings the entire contents of the container will be exported and you're going to get a bigger file and that is the one I would strongly recommend going for because this is not going to back up much in the way of the application data. So you have the option of exporting to your Synology NAS which is why I showed you guys that or you can export to your computer. Now the final thing I recommend doing so just to let me just uh, take this back up. Okay so I've got that job running I'll get a notification when it's done. Um, the second thing that you should do or I would recommend doing is if we're backing up containers we always think about our three, two, one backup approach. The container is your first copy of the data. It's a working copy. So you, you would ideally want to take two backups of that container. The first backup we've just done, we've backed it up onto the Synology. Now, some people would say that's not a good idea, which is why uh, they give you the option to export onto your local computer. So it's on a separate notification there that the backup was done. Uh, so that it's on a separate physical machine or you could back up, back it up to Synology and just pull the backup down. And the second reason, 
The second thing I'd recommend doing is setting up a little cloud sync job with the folder that we just uh, talked about that I just showed you for storing the container backups. And that way you can actually create a sync when you take a new backup, it'll automatically push that backup off to cloud storage, whether you're using something like Backblaze or S3. This is a really, really tiny, tiny container. Let's just see how big it is, very small. Um, but uh, if you're using a, uh, you know, hosting bigger applications with, you know, heavy databases, uh, those sync jobs are going to be bigger, uh, just to let you know, of course. And uh, that is it. Hope this was helpful. Uh, this is how you can back up, uh, one way at least, to back up containers on your Synology. In summary, you can try to back up the application contents or you can back it up at the container level through eating the steps I showed above. Thanks for watching. Until the next video.